Uh, basically, today's topic, uh, the problem of pornography, we're going to look at what it is, why it's a problem, and what we can do about it. Uh, but first, as Carrie had asked, um, uh, myself, I led men's ministries in my church for quite a bit, so I dealt with this issue uh, a number of times. I also have a ministry for adults with divorced parents, and often when children experience their parents' divorce as part of trying to heal, as part of trying to just escape, uh, addictions will creep in, and often with the guys, pornography will be that addiction. I am also a licensed professional counselor. And uh, so I'll see it in my counseling office as well. One of the interesting things I found through the counseling is that although the church has been sounding the alarm about pornography for many years, helping men break free from porn, in the last few years, the secular or non-church community is now also alerting people to the negative impact porn has on relationships and individuals as well. This topic affects those in and outside of the church. So first, let's look at what is pornography. Um, the definition, there's a number of definitions, but this, this definition is pretty broad brush or applies in the most uh, broad way. Uh, pornography is the depiction of erotic behavior as in pictures or writing, audio, whatever, intended to cause sexual excitement. And that's really the key, the cause sexual excitement. That is the what porn does. But a couple of things before we really jump into this, the first thing is it's not just men. Uh, you've probably heard of the movie Fifty Shades of Grey. Um, if you haven't, it's basically the story of a sadistic and uh, masochistic sexual relationship between a businessman and a college student. Um, excuse me. Um, however, the reason I mention is because the Fifty Shades of Grey series sold 35 million copies in the U.S. and 150 million copies worldwide. Movie sales were even more staggering. Over half a billion, with a B, billion U.S. dollars um, were, sent, were spent on this movie. Um, in the U.S. here, they called the books mommy porn. Um, so it's not just porn is not just limited to men, but it's overwhelmingly a male program, a problem. And uh, this presentation is going to focus predominantly on men. And we'll get to the reasons for that in a moment. But the second thing of note is that pornography is not new. Um, I believe that if you look at this definition, uh, exotic dancing could be included because basically it's intended to cause sexual excitement. And exotic dancing goes back thousands of years. Today, we have in the U.S. strip clubs, and, and that's really worldwide. And strip clubs are basically live pornography. So it's not just men, but we're going to predominantly look at men because that's the bulk. And it's not new. It goes back many, many years. So now let's look at what are some of the problems of pornography. And I'll be using porn and pornography interchangeably. It, it's the same word. The first issue we deal with is pornography feeds discontent. It's comparative by nature. Who I'm with, the relationship we have, isn't good enough compared to what I'm seeing. The person, interestingly enough, the person even in the porn picture or video isn't good enough for after a couple views. They're not good enough. So we move on. We, it feeds discontent. We're never satisfied with where we are. Now, the discontent issue is true for men and women. But the second issue we look at is that there is a significantly different impact of porn when you look at it on men versus women. Women, as a group, because they don't have a lot of testosterone, they don't get the chemical rush, that chemical hit that men do. And that's why early relationships, sometimes uh, young women, when they're early married or dating or whatever, they'll use porn as to get excitement and stuff because they don't process it the way men do. They don't realize how men process addiction. Men, many men, get addicted to it. And that's very different than the impact it has on women. And that's the third problem with pornography. Pornography is addictive. 
whenever men get excited sexually, a drug called dopamine is released. But the amount of dopamine drops off after a while unless we look at new images and look at new images. And we keep feeding our brain, putting new images in our brain. Some of the research is interesting. It says that in a lot of cases, nudity isn't what hooks men. It's the constant supply of new images. And that is why the pornography industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. 17 billion, with a B, billion dollars a year in the U.S. alone. And worldwide, uh, an NBC story some years ago said that $97 billion a year were being sent being spent on pornography. I know uh, many of our guests uh, might be in India, and this is the figure, the global sales of pornography every year in rupees. It's staggering. And that's the figure of addiction. In the Bible, Romans chapter 6 is interesting because it talks about being a slave to sin. A slave had no rights. It had to do whatever the master said. And Romans chapter 6, verse 14 says, For sin shall no longer be your master. Other versions say have dominion over you or rule over you. For sin shall no longer be your master, because you are not under the law, but under grace. But pornography is controlling us. We are its slave. And I'm sure there's some of our male guests today that maybe are offended by that. You know, they'll say, I hear it. I can quit anytime I want. Now, that is not what I see, and that's not what the research shows. You know, I recorded a series of programs for Christian men on pornography, and one of the programs, in one of the programs, there was a prayer. And part of that prayer was this, in your name, Lord Jesus, I renounce all sinful activities connected with pornography and lust in my life. And when we say renounce, basically, we're saying, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that I will no longer engage in or support lust or pornography in my life. No more magazines, no more pictures or videos, no more lusting over women in the street or at work, no more affairs, no more looking at lingerie magazines, no more lust. And for the majority of us guys, this is a very high standard. And I find it's usually not, I can quit. It's normally, I don't want to quit. And this is because of the pleasure we get from the dopamine. We are addicted to it. The next problem I want to look at is the images are often stored automatically in our brain. It's kind of like a picture file on a computer. And those pictures will just pop up at any time. So when we put images into our brain, they're going to come up later and they tend to stay there. So we have to be very careful. The next issue is porn leads to more destructive behaviors. Proverbs 6 verses 27 and 28 say, can a man scoop fire into his lap without his clothes being burned? Can a man walk on hot coals without his feet being scorched? When someone comes into my counseling office who is struggling with pornography, one of my first questions is, how far has the addiction gone? Are you looking at free pictures and videos of porn? Are you paying for the pornography? Are you wanting or demanding that your wife or girlfriend do sexual things they're uncomfortable with? Are you visiting chat rooms? Have you met with anyone from a chat room? Are you seeing prostitutes? Are you having affairs with friends or coworkers? Are you involved in sadomasochism or bondage? Have you forced yourself on anyone? Pornography, because it's addictive in nature, you have to go further or deeper to get the same sexual excitement. It's a downward spiral. 
And that's why it'll take us further and creates destructive behaviors. The other thing, and Carrie kind of touched on this, is porn is leading to divorces. It is having a negative impact on relationships. And that's a big reason why the secular or non-church world is waking up and alerting people to this. The lawyers will tell you that pornography addiction is showing up in a lot of divorce cases. Men are putting unfair sexual demands on their wife. They're having affairs. They're spending their time looking at porn. They're asking for polyamorous relationships or open marriages where you stay married, but you're having sexual relations with other people. It's pulling time and energy away from the relationships. That's having a negative impact on the relationship. James 1, verses 14 and 15 says, Each person is tempted by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. And we are seeing the death of relationships because of porn, because it's an addiction. And the last thing I want to look at as far as problems are concerned is it violates God's rules. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 3 says, God's will is for you to be holy, so stay away from all sexual sin. But let's, what is sexual sin? Uh, many of you have heard of the Ten Commandments. Well, the Seventh Commandment is don't commit adultery. Part of the Tenth Commandment is don't covet your neighbor's wife. Covet is to desire, lust after, long for, which is basically pornography. But Jesus took this to an even higher level. Jesus said, you have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Pornography is sexual sin. Remember this? We looked at this a moment ago. Each person is tempted by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Death of relationships, death of jobs, death of health, death of hope. And that is why God's word says, flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. But the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. In Hebrews, it says, let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the marriage bed be undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. The Apostle Peter wrote, Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires, which wage war against your soul. And Paul wrote in the book of Romans, Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, so that you obey its evil desires. There's that slavery image again. Obey its evil desires. Obey. We have no control. The dopamine takes over, and we obey its evil desires. Now, that's some of the problems. But there's one more I want to touch on, and I apologize if this topic uh, makes anyone uncomfortable, but if we're talking about porn and the problems, we have to talk about masturbation. Now, I'm not going to get graphic or anything, but there's been a lot of confusion in this area. Does the Bible teach specifically against masturbation? No. Does the Bible teach against masturbation? I say yes. 
Proverbs 5, 18 and 19 says, may you rejoice in the wife of your youth. May her breasts satisfy you always. May you ever be intoxicated with her love. We talked about what Jesus said. Don't commit adultery in your heart. We mentioned the Ten Commandments. Don't covet your neighbor's wife. Don't lust after, don't desire, don't long for your neighbor's wife. Job wrote, I made a covenant with my eyes not to look with lust at a young woman. But what if you aren't a Christ follower? What then? Maybe some of you are saying, Kent, that's good for you, but I'm not into all this religious stuff. Or what if you're single? When you masturbate, often, over time, you train your body to respond in a very specific way. You know exactly how to produce the desired result at the desired time. The problem is, when you are intimate with your wife or with your future wife, for you single guys, her body doesn't touch you in that very specific way. So the experience isn't so great for you. And when it's not so great for you, it tends not to be great for her because we blame her. She can't compete with how you've trained your body and mind. And don't forget the dopamine. The mind is now looking for that. So she can't compete with how you've trained your body and your mind to expect sexual pleasure. You're disappointed. So you go back to porn and you go back to looking at other women. Because anything less than what you're used to isn't satisfying. So the relationship is either very unhappy, very unhappy really for both spouses, or the relationship collapses. And it's one of the reasons why we see this negative impact of porn on relationships, how it just continues to take people down and take people down and take people down because it morphs into all sorts of unbiblical behaviors. James 1 says, each person is tempted by his own desire. And I keep coming back to this scripture because this is really a key scripture that we see when we look at the issue of pornography. Each person is tempted by his own desire. Then desire, when it is conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's fully grown, brings forth death. So we've looked at what porn is and what some of the problems are. And I see this in my counseling office. I see it with Christians. I see it with non-Christians, people that come in and they are literally a slave to it. They don't realize that it is, they think about it all the time. They spend all this time on it and it really is literally controlling their life. Um, but how do we overcome temptation and addiction? Well, the first thing, we have to admit that we're addicted, that we can't stop. And that's a very difficult thing for a lot of people. When I deal with men, and I've again, as I said, when we began, I've dealt with men for many years. And this is a very, very difficult step. It's kind of interesting because if you look at AA, those who are coming out of um, alcohol addiction, this is the first step. We admit that we're weak, that we can't do it, that we're hooked. Um, you know, what, you know, I think about when, if you're struggling with this concept of admitting that we're addicted, let me ask you, if you could get back all the time you've spent looking at porn, what could you do? What could you do if you could get back all the energy you've lost because maybe you were up all night long instead of going to sleep and getting a good night's rest. What could you do if you could get back that job you had because you lost it because either you were caught looking at pornography or maybe you were spending too much time looking at pornography on the job so you didn't do your job well and you were fired. 
what would you do if you could get back the relationship you lost or are losing because of porn? You can't get it back, but we can start start new today. And we do that by the second thing. Change your perspective of pornography. Porn makes women objects for our pleasure. Let me say that again. Porn makes women objects for our pleasure. The last time I spoke, I spoke uh, going into a, a Mother's Day, and we talked about how Jesus came he is the one person that really lifted up women to their true status. Because up until that point, women couldn't own property. They couldn't really, they had no rights. Um, and Jesus came along. And I explained through a number of various ways, it showed how Jesus put women up on equal footing, how they were one with men in Jesus's eyes, in God's eyes. But porn puts women down. Uh, Carrie, before we started, mentioned that. It is not a victimless crime. We know about sexual trafficking. We know about you know how women are are abused. Um, so it is a system where we dehumanize women. And for Christians, that's a very very difficult thing to be doing when we have a God who humanizes us and loves us and treats us with such grace and with love. Horn is totally self focused. Remember, love gives, lust demands. Particularly you ladies out there, I want you to remember that. Love gives. Oh, he loves me, he loves me, he loves me. Love gives, lust demands. And guys, this is something that we don't always think about, but would you want some guy? Lusting after your wife or your sister or your daughter? With those women you're lusting over when you're looking at porn or porn movies, they are somebody's wife, somebody's sister, somebody's daughter. And Paul wrote to Timothy, he said, treat the younger women in all purity as sisters in the Lord. And that's everybody. And that includes purity of our thoughts toward them. So we need to change our perspective. The next thing we want to do is we accept God's power for healing and protection. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13, No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to men. But God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Isn't that wonderful? I love this verse. Isn't it fantastic that there's an all powerful God that wants to help us? provides a way, wants to help you, wants to help me, there is. The problem is, is that this God is perfect, absolutely no sin. And we all sin. We all mess up. We all miss the mark. So with that sin, we can't be in God's presence because sin can't be in God's presence. And today, we're just talking about one sin. The Bible says, if you sin just once, lie, cheat, steal, deceive, sin, pornography, lust, that's it. You can't be in God's presence. But that same God who promises to provide a way for us to escape temptation has provided a way for us to be with him, even though we're sinners. The Bible teaches, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us 
while we were still sinners. Paul wrote in Ephesians, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that anyone can boast. It is a gift from God to be saved. But saved from what? The Bible says, for everyone has sinned, every one of us. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. And the wages, what we earn for that sin, is death. That's what we're saved from. Separation from God for all eternity. Which is one way Christianity is different from every other religion. In every religion, it is what we need to do to earn our way to get to God, to get to a higher consciousness, or to have a wonderful eternal life. It is what we have to do. Christianity says we can't do anything to earn salvation. The Bible says the free gift of God, the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. The Bible says everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So I and the host of this program encourage you to accept God's gift of forgiveness for all of your sin through Jesus Christ. He so deeply desires to walk with you, to encourage you, to uplift you, to comfort you. And most importantly, to save you so you can spend all eternity with God. And as we wrap up, if this topic is personal to you or someone you care about, there's there's a couple things we just want to look at because it's really important. Because this topic, one of the things that we deal with is condemnation. And it's really important to know that God still accepts you. The Bible says there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. Hear that. There is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. That's so important because when I see men, very often they feel like they're the only person that's struggling with this. They're the only person that's tempted like this. They're the only person that has looked at this stuff and afterward feels so terrible and condemned. But the Bible clearly says, no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. The reason why this is a multi-billion dollar industry is because you're not alone. But God still accepts you, and he loves you, and he wants to free you from this addiction. He wants to give you the power to overcome this addiction. But the second thing is we need to confess our sins to God. The Bible says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. I love the song that Rufus sang at the beginning. I surrender all. All to Jesus, I surrender. If you're struggling with this issue, first of all, I don't believe in coincidences. I only believe in God incidences that there's a reason why you are here today. There's a reason why you punched in today. There's a reason why you saw the ad for this today. 
because either you need to hear this or somebody you love or care about needs to hear this. But more likely, you need to hear this. Confess your sins to God. I love this verse because what it does is in its very nature, it says, we sin. It doesn't say once you become a follower of Christ that you will never sin again, you'll never mess up again. It doesn't say that. It says if we confess our sins because we sin. But God loves us so much. The the most popular verse is, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that none should perish, that we should all have eternal life. He loves us so much that he put these things in, that if we simply confess our sins, he is faithful and he'll forgive us our sins. And I like the end part of this, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Isn't that wonderful? Purify us from all unrighteousness. My friend, if you're struggling with porn, if you're struggling with the temptation, even now the dopamine is kicking in and just talking about this subject, is your brain's going, oh, I really would like to look at this when we're done. Confess it to God, and he can purify you from all unrighteousness. The third thing is find an accountability partner, um, somebody that can help you with your commitment to stop using pornography. Talk to a pastor, uh, reach out to one of the people that leads these calls, talk to another godly man, uh, find a Christian counselor. It is very, very difficult to overcome this by yourself. And very often, because even though it's so widespread, there's so much embarrassment and shame that often can come with this that we don't want to share with anybody. But it's very, very difficult to overcome by yourself. I encourage you to reach out. And the last thing, as I mentioned earlier, I recorded some programs uh, for. Transworld Radio, actually. Uh, it was a show called Champions Arise. And this link is to uh, those 12 programs that we recorded, podcasts, they call them now, um, that uh, were recorded on for pornography, overcoming pornography temptations and, and all that. Um, they're about 15 minutes each, and they speak to the various challenges that pornography uh, creates and how to overcome those challenges. And I'm not sure, but I know there's a number of series. Pornography was one of those series. A number of the series were actually translated into different languages. Um, I can't remember if this series was translated, but I know some of the series were actually translated into three or four languages in India, um, in Africa, in, in Russian, around the world, some of the languages. And if you go to that website, if you go to this link, you'll be able to see that uh, whether it's translated into a different language or not. So um, that's the last thing. I encourage you, because we had very limited time this morning to cover this topic, I encourage you to check out those uh, programs because they cover it in a much more broader sense and also give the hope that only Christ can offer. So uh, that concludes uh, what I'm going to talk about today. With that, I really thank you for your attention. Appreciate the invite uh, to be able to speak today. And at this point, I'm going to turn it back over to Carrie and uh, we can get into some questions and answers. Thank you very much, brother. I do have a couple of them here. Let me get rid of all First this. one. Here we go. Uh, let's see if I can put this the right way. Okay. Um, first one, I'm going to talk. I'm going to ask you a question from from my own before I ask somebody that from um, sure that typed in here. Talk about for a little bit about accountability for someone who's struggling with this issue. How do they find, how do they keep themselves accountable or find people to help them stay accountable to their commitment to not participate in this awful sin? Okay. Um, An accountability partner um, is, again, as I mentioned, is really important. Some of the qualities of an accountability partner is they don't condemn, but they don't condone. There's a balance in there that we want. I call it, well, it's important to make sure that because the very nature of addiction is relapses. It happens. But what we want is somebody that steps in and says you that you confess to 
And they step in and they say, okay, what led to that? What were the issues? What were you thinking before? Were you stressed? Were you hungry? Were you blaming your wife? Or, you know, what's going on that led to that so that we can kind of identify what's going on? So you want an accountability partner that will ask those key questions. There's also, I don't have it here, but there's an accountability worksheet that basically they go through a series of questions. They ask, have you looked at anything this week? Have you, you know, mm-hmm. masturbated this week? Have you, you know, thought about doing it this week? And then the last question on there is, are you lying to me? <laughs> because, because very often this is a very deceptive sort of addiction Then they mm-hmm. will lie to, but it's very important. The accountability person is, has confidentiality. We don't want this thing out on prayer lists and all that is a one-to-one thing. And you want to be meeting with them at least once a week. And you also want to have somebody that will allow you to contact them if you're struggling, that you can send out a text, send out an email, or call and say, hey, I'm really struggling right now. I'm really stressed and I'm really being tempted. Can you pray for me? You want Mm -hmm. somebody that will have that accountability. What sorts of things can a person fill their life with when they cut out pornography? What sort of, I know, I know, I know the, the list could be endless, but um, if you were to give a few suggestions, if somebody says, oh, I want to cut out pornography, well, what else would I do with, with my time, with my life, whatever? What would you suggest? Well, I would suggest uh, the most important thing is what the Bible says, renew your mind. Dwell mm-hmm. on those things that are pure and good and kind. Um, you know, w- it's a really good question because when we take something out, it creates a vacuum, mm-hmm. and we need to put something in. Um, so, I the first thing I suggest is we have scriptures in our mind that when we are tempted, we go to those scriptures. Um, mm-hmm. I think it was the First Corinthians, uh, the scripture about with every temptation, God provides okay. an escape. Yes. Have that scripture in your mind so that when you're feeling tempted, go, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. The word says that with this temptation, God's providing an escape. Lord, help me to find that escape. Mm -hmm. So just having those scriptures in your mind. The other thing that you want to do is not so much, because as you had said, Carrie, you could do anything, but there's certain things that you can do that are preventative. Make Sure. sure your computer is in a central location. It's not in a back office or not in whatever. Uh, make sure that um, you know you make a commitment that you're not going to use the computer during certain times. If your mm-hmm. wife goes to bed at ten, you're not using the computer after ten. It's just that <laughs> simple. Sure. You know, there's certain things you can do that are preventative mm-hmm. that can help. Uh, but yeah, pretty much whatever. The first thing I would say is the most important thing is putting things into your brain because really it's a battle here. The battle is in the mind, and we want to make yeah. sure that our mind is dwelling on those things. Um, fear not. Cast all your cares on God, because he cares for you. I, When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than, than I, you mm-hmm. know, the Psalms. You know, fill your mind with the word of God, so that that is the single best thing you can do to combat uh, <laughs> pornography in, account, in combination with um, an accountability partner. That's right. So I got a, I got a Petra song running through my head now, but it has those words. Anyway. Uh, Christian music. Music yeah. is a power. I surrender all, all to Definitely. Jesus. I, you know, any song, because music tends to stay in our brain. Mm-hmm. You know, I have some people that will go through the alphabet. Um, you know, particularly if they're Christians and they've been walking for a little bit, um, yep. if your brain starts going to lustful images or whatever, the wonderful thing about the male brain is that it can only do one thing at a time. Literally, the <laughs> neuroscience shows that the ladies kind of can do a lot of different things, but the guys are very one singular thing. So if you're going through the alphabet of scripture or whatever, it ties your brain up and you can't be thinking about those things. <laughs> You know, all things lead to Christ. You know, be yep. be not uh, be not afraid. All, uh, alphabet, all A, all of sinning fall short of the glory of God. There you go. B, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. If, uh, uh, Ephesians six one or no, yeah, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Ephesians six one. Uh, f- no, that's not it. Um, that's C. Romans. That's Romans. <laughs> Is what? That was the Romans. Acts 16, 31. Acts 16, 31. Okay. <laughs> See, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. That's Ephesians 6, 1. 
et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> you know, and even if you don't All remember the, the verse, Zion Harden was yeah. glad. <laughs> there you go. And even if you don't remember the references, even if you don't, maybe you're not that deep in the scriptures yeah. yet, just grab what you know. Just simply mm-hmm. taking that step to redirect your mind will help. Yeah. I always tell people what matters is is to, to use an, is to use a phrase to say, what course have you set? Mm-hmm. Have you set a course to follow Christ? Or have you set a course to follow your own desires? Yeah. That's the choice. What, what course have you set? And, we, and my favorite scripture in the world is, is uh, 1 Peter chapter 1. Blessed be the Lord of our God and Father Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope mm-hmm. through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. And so it goes. So are you, do you have that living hope that you know for sure? If so, walk in that direction and just say, that other stuff is dead to me. I've, I've, the old me is gone. The new me has come, mm-hmm. et cetera. And Carrie, what, that, that word hope, when mm-hmm. we're talking about pornography, that word hope is so important because there are men who are drifting into hopelessness. Yes. They've tried and they've tried and they keep falling and they're feeling condemned. But with God, there's always hope. Satan mm-hmm. feeds hopelessness. God yeah. will always lead us toward hope. And Jesus is that hope. Yes. So one one or two more questions here. They kind of are, are the same. They kind of touch on the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, this is for someone who is married. Mm-hmm. Is and it, um, this is like obviously from a male perspective. When my spouse is away, seeing her or talking about sexual things with her, I, I suppose on the phone or something, mm-hmm. is that pornography? Or is it lust when I'm thinking sexual things about my spouse when they are away? Good question. Good question. My answer is no, but you probably will in de- uh, embellish on that. Well, here's the thing. And this is, I didn't touch on it when we were talking about, you know, masturbation earlier, but (laughs) one of the issues is there's a difference between love and lust. Mm -hmm. If you're thinking about your wife in the Song of Solomon sort of way, that you're adoring her and you're loving her and you're, and Song of Solomon is very graphic, really. It Um, is. I mean, it, it really is. I mean, it's a wonderful sonnet of two lovers who are together and in all its glory. If you're thinking about your wife in that way, yes. If you are lusting over your wife in ways that are not honoring to her, or if she knew you were thinking that she wouldn't be real thrilled about it, then that's an issue. Okay. You know, we the 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 temptation to drift into the flesh is so strong in this area. That's why it's it's a battle. And we want to make sure we are loving our wife, not lusting our wife. And the power of the Holy Spirit can help us to love our wife. So should we be thinking about our wife? Absolutely. Let your eyes only be for her. (laughs) May the wife of you, absolutely. But we want to do it in a loving way, not a lusting way. Yeah. I always always say people are to be loved, objects are to be used. People are not to be used. Good. Yeah. Um, So then branch out from that. Before we were married, of course, we were dating and engaged. He said, what about the same with a future partner? I think yours would be the same answer, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it not? What if you're having thoughts about your future partner or even having conversation? How co- how far, <laughs> how, how much of sexual conversation should you have with, say, with a fiancé before you get married? How deep should it go? I would say that in the context of premarital counseling, we have a person who is leading you through important questions sexually, um, uh, we would have that conversation. I would be, one of the issues that we're dealing with today is so many people have sexual experience before they get married. Mm -hmm. So I think it is important that honest conversations are had about 
what the past is. And I don't mean in graphic mm-hmm. detail, but no. you know, if there's previous people or whatever the experience is, um, I think that needs to be discussed. What we do, how we do it, all that sort of stuff, I don't believe that's healthy um, because I think it feeds what's already programmed in. I would encourage going (laughs) backwards to where we allow the Lord to bring in, there's a, I forget what they call it, um, spiritual virginity. There's a phrase Mm. that they talk about where even though the past has been whatever, we recommit ourselves to Christ and we renew our virginity, if you will, before the Lord and before each other. And I would say that would include, I would use those conversations more toward God than toward uh, sex. Mm -hmm. Last thing, last question I have here is is the person wants to know if you can please read out the website for the series that you made. That's a long, um, oh, you know what? Can I put it in the chat room? Sure, please put a link in the chat room. Uh, Send it to everybody if you could. Here, I'll do that right now. Um, I'm impressed I could do that. Cool. Okay. Uh, How do I do this? Enter. Boom. There it is. Okay. There it is. Hey, for those of you who are curious, there it is right there in the chat box. I'll read it out just in case people are watching this later and don't get to see it. HTTPS colon slash slash www dot TWR three six zero dot org slash programs slash ministry underscore ID comma one two two slash series underscore ID comma two three five six zero. If you go to championsarise.org, it'll come okay. up. Just look for uh, programs, I think it is, and you'll see. Championsarise.org, yeah. pro, uh, and then look for programs or yeah. slash programs. Yeah, yeah. championsarise.org. And What's the title see. of the series, please? Uh, if you remember. It's on pornography. You can't miss it. Okay. <laughs> I can't yeah. miss it. <laughs> there's, there's about, I think there's five different series we did. Six right. actually, um, and one yeah. of them's on pornography. There's a number of series there. One's on the Christ uh, on Galatians two twenty uh-huh. about walking, and it really they kind of go together of allowing Christ to be our. You know, we are no longer ourselves, but Christ is reborn in us. Mm-hmm. Okay, I don't see any other any remarks here. In the, let's see if I just check the. CWAC Ministry Group website one more time to see if there's anybody that's typed in over there. I don't see any message on the CWAC site. So I very much appreciate it, Brother Kent. You did a very good presentation. I really enjoyed it. It's my pleasure. I appreciate the opportunity to share. 